Welcome everybody to the New Fly Fisher. I'm your host, Colin McEwen. In today's show, we're going to be talking about streamer fishing, how important it is for fly anglers to understand the different principles you can use to catch big trout with streamers. We're going to be talking about the different forage fish that are here in the Bow River. People at uh, Fishtails Fly Shop are going to be talking some, about some of the tackle and techniques they like to use. It's going to be a really interesting show. Stay with us. Today I'm joining some of the people from Fishtails Fly Shop in Calgary to fish the prolific Bow River. Collectively, the staff possesses a wealth of information about the bow and how to successfully angle in differing conditions. The technique we are focusing on is streamer fishing to catch the large trout that inhabit the bow. It is not uncommon for a fly fisher to catch numerous fish between 20 to 24 inches in any given day. This is truly a world-class trout fishery. The Bow River below Calgary is incredibly nutrient rich, which fosters plentiful weed growth. This weed growth supports numerous insects such as scuds, caddis, and mayflies. In addition, at certain times of the year, great numbers of terrestrial insects become available to the fish. The net result is that the trout on the Bow grow large and strong. Even though the large trout can obtain lots of nutrients from the plentiful insect activity, they still will not pass up the chance to take a large meal which baitfish will offer. Ron Ambrose discusses the setup we are using today and also details some of the flies that are popular on the Bow River. Okay, today we're uh, streamer fishing the Bow River, which is uh, right behind us. And we're, we're going to use a little different presentation than you might use for nymphing and dry fly. Over the years, we've developed several different types of streamers. And we have dart side leeches. These have lead eyes and marabou body or cone heads. The old standby, and this has been used around here for years, is called the Bow River Bugger. And this can be used near the bank and then pulled under by a sink tip line. These are uh, the ones that we use mostly in this time of the year. What we do is on our fly rod, instead of using a full floating line, we use a sink tip line. That is about the first 10 or 15 feet is a sinking line, and then we have the rest of it is floating line. And the reason we don't use a full sinking line is that when we go to pull up and cast, we don't have to pull more than 15, 12 or 15 feet of line out of the water. If you're using a full sink, and you've got this tremendous amount of line to pull out of the water, and it hampers your casting. The sink rate on the sink tip, uh, we can uh, change over the course of the year as the water drops and, and gets uh, less velocity and gets uh, shallower, we go to a slower sinking tip. So we're not banging on the rocks and getting hung up in the weeds. Uh, for faster water and deeper water, we have what we call uh, several faster lines called grains, which have 150 grains, 250 grains, 350 grains. When we get to 350 grains, we're talking about a really fast sinking sink tip. And that's for fast water and deep water. Now our presentation is as we're drifting through these pockets, uh, we cast across the pockets, mend a few times, let the sink tip sink, and then strip back just as fast as we can. And we like to do this in short casts. And the reason we want to make relatively short casts is that we can cover as much water while we're drifting down the river as we can. And the takes are very severe, uh, very hard, because first of all, you're stripping very fast, the current's very fast, and the fish hit it really hard. Nice fish. Well, that's better than I thought, too. Yeah. There he goes. Again, the water's got a little, be little bit deeper. Yep, so they can just see the green one, which is looking a little better over there. They spawn in the spring, so they're ready to, ready to go right now. Nice fish, Ross. Here. 
you have on there? Do you have how many pound maximum? Without a doubt, the Bow is a blue ribbon river, especially the 50 mile stretch from Calgary down to Carson. The river offers numerous types of river conditions, including long flats and fast rapids. It has been estimated that this section of the river has an average of 1,800 to 2,500 fish per mile, one of the highest in the world. There is essentially four types of trout available. Brown and rainbow trout are the primary species throughout this section. Less common are cutthroat and bull trout which are infrequently caught and are very hard to specifically target. When bull trout are hooked, they're usually large, with 24 to 30 inch specimens being very common. Now the way we set up for the, uh, the sink tip streamer approach is a very short leader. They're only three or four feet, four feet would be maximum. I've tied this on on a, a perfection loop so that I can get a swimming action on my streamer. At the end of my butt section, which I've looped onto the sink tip line, I usually tie a bimini twist knot, which gives me lots of spring action to help when I nail a fish, because the takes are very severe, because you're pulling very hard on the line, the current's very hard, and the fish hit it very hard. So this gives me some extra strength. And then I put on whatever test I feel is necessary uh, for the fishing conditions. In this case, I'm using an uh, eight-pound test. I'm just going to go over here and I'll pop out. Watch. for a second, Ben. a bit about uh, presentation of uh, streamer patterns. We use a sink tip line and we cast towards shore usually or across pocket areas. 
make relatively short casts so that we can cover a lot of water with uh, really fast strip retrieves. I'm in relatively shallow water here and fairly quiet water. So I'm, I'm uh, stripping and making my retrieve as soon as the fly hits the water. When we get into some faster, deeper water, I'll make a little men, let the sinking line sink so I can get down to the fish, and then strip back. And by making relatively short casts, I can cover a fair amount of water in a hurry. If you start making too long a cast, you end up missing some pretty good productive water. And it's a very energetic way to fly fish because you're working all the time. The water we're, we're in right now is a little bit thin. So we're going to wait until uh, Ben puts us into some uh, more productive water. Not real big, but I think it's a nice one. I think I said that before. That net handy there, uh, Ben? Oh, it's just a little guy. I want a net them, though. You want a net them there? I think so. Good scoot over here. Nice brown? All right. Oh, he's got energy. Hang on, go. Okay, let him go, buddy. He is good to go. starting to come into some pocket water here where there's a deeper slot and you essentially just cast it upstream of the deeper slot and then start to strip it through and the fish will chase it right out of the slots and always fish it right to the boat so that you can see your flies. Lots of times they'll follow it right to the boat and just as you're pulling it out of the water they'll take oh, a wham. swipe at it. <laughs> And the cast, you can see, it's called a Belgium cast, it's an oval cast, and it's wide open loops so that you don't end up with those flies in the back of your head, because this is a very heavy outfit. This kind of fishing isn't for everybody, this is a very active, it's physically demanding form of fishing, that's for sure. And the but wind helps too. <laughs> sure is a lot of fun when it's working right. There's no doubt about it when they hit it, that's for sure. <laughs> Not for the faint of heart, this kind of fishing. <laughs> that's for sure. You cover a lot more water this way, streamer fishing, than you would, let's say, nymphing or dry fly fishing. You get so many more casts in. Yeah. Those flies are covering a lot of water. And you try and give them a, a side profile, that's why I'm fishing this way. That way it look, they get a better look at the fly, so that it's always coming across the current. Now you can only do that from a boat. When you're from shore, you can only get limited side shots at fish. There we go, there's one. Nice fish. Nice and close to the boat. Oh, too. and guess what he took? The white, white Blue River one. bugger. Yeah. So he took the back end fly on the white one. Whoa! <laughs> now, did I say we were tarpon fishing? Just like a tarpon. 
right in this fast sort of buckety water. That's a lot of the times when that's right where they are. Nice little rainbow. Oh, come here, buddy. Now, we tend to fight these fish really hard. So you do lose them every once in a while, but there he's ready. All right, Dave. He's tagged, too. Oh, he's got a tag in him. There you go. We got a tagged fish. So we can read the tag and find out where he was tagged. Oh, we are getting all kinds of interesting stuff. There we go. Grab them up here. A E N X. A N X? No, A E N, oh, sorry, A E N V 05972. 05972. A E N V 05972, yep. He's about 18 inches. Fish and Wildlife has tagged some of these fish uh, during some electroshocking, and we just have to record the numbers, and then we can report back to them the condition of the fish there you go. and the size of the fish, all that kind of stuff. One of the best times for uh, streamer fishing is right after runoff in June. That's when you uh, you get the dirty water if you get around the two feet of visibility mark is when you really 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 get some excited fish because they hang right close to the bank and with the water really high like not like it is today you just pound the bank and that's one of the most productive ways to stream your fish the bonus about fishing in the fall like this is you can really find the fish stack up and congregate together whereas in june you really have to cover water a lot down those banks and find individual fish. Now the water's starting to get quicker. We should find some aggressive rainbows hanging out in this water for sure. Another important piece of equipment is polarized glasses that really help you find those defined buckets in the water because as soon as you find a bucket like that in the quick water you usually find fish right away. So what they do is they hang out in the deeper water and wait for the food to drift right over their head from the shallower ripple. So this water right here is just ideal for streamer fishing. Fish will congregate in here and eat nymphs as well. But I know there's some aggressive rainbows right here. Streamer fishing is an effective way of covering a lot of water and increasing your odds of hooking a large fish. The double streamer setup used today is deadly to use, but ensure you check your local regulations before employing it. Many states and provinces do not allow the use of more than one hook. For more information about appropriate sink tip lines to use for streamer fishing, we strongly recommend you check with your local fly shop for a guidance on the lengths and weightings for the conditions you'll be fishing. As well, your local fly shop can give you advice on good streamer patterns which are effective in your area. To learn more about the patterns we use today, for information about the Bow River in Alberta, or to read more about our series, then please visit us on the World Wide Web at www.thenewflyfisher.com. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>